guys, welcome or welcome back. If this is your first time here, my name is Katie. I am the owner and artist behind Salvaged by Kay Scott. I make my living right here out of my home, painting and restyling found and thrifted furniture pieces that are worn out or just plain outdated and bringing them right back to life. I was so excited to get to work on a cane piece of furniture again this week. Cane webbing and rattan is so hot right now in the world of home decor, so I knew immediately I could bring this piece back to life. This is yet another curbside freebie that I picked up a few weeks ago. It's actually a two-piece china hutch, but in this video, I'm gonna be focusing on the bottom. I think this would make a great server in a dining room or an entertainment console unit for your TV. I do have a couple of different ideas on what to do with the top of this piece creating its own separate unit, but I haven't quite nailed down what I want to do to it yet. That will be another video. I'm going to start my prep work by taking this apart. I love the cane inserts in the doors, but there is a board, a black board on the back of the cane, and I'd like to get rid of that so we can open it up. People can use their remotes with their devices through the cane, so everything needs to come out of the doors. I used a small flathead screwdriver just to start gently prying this backer piece away. The cane was attached to the inside of the door trim with some staples and a little bit of glue, so I just very carefully pried them off one staple at a time until my cane was free. And I finished up dismantling by taking the doors off of the piece, removing the hinges, the door catches, and the poles. Next up, everything got a really good scrub down with some of this Safe Prep TSP alternative. I found this at Home Hardware this week and I'm really excited to have a more eco-friendly version of my favorite cleaning product. There's just a tiny bit of repair work that needs to happen on the bottom skirting of this piece. I'm gonna be using some of this PC Lumber two-part epoxy to fill in some gouges around the bottom. 
This stuff is really fun to work with. It's sort of like wood Play-Doh. I cut off a piece about the size that I thought I needed and then wrapped everything back up well and put the putty back in its container so it doesn't dry out. Next up, I took my chunk. You can see there's two colors, a lighter and a darker color. You just want to mold these together until you have one uniform color and then you can apply it to your repair. It was obviously not set up hard enough for me to sand, so I needed to smoosh that putty back into my repair. I left it for another hour so it could cure up nice and hard, and then I sanded it smooth. In the meantime, I gave the rest of the piece a really thorough scuff sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper. That is just going to scuff up the surface of this laminate piece and give my primer and my paint a little something extra to hang on to. I've been priming just about everything lately. I'm finding it just easier than trying to guess if a piece is going to bleed or have adhesion issues. So I'm going to be using my favorite bin shellac base primer on this piece. I like to line my roller tray with tin foil and that way when I'm finished, I can toss the foil, put my roller into a Ziploc baggie and save it for my next project. I went ahead and applied two thin coats of this primer with a four inch microfiber roller. It's just so much easier than trying to clean this stuff out of my spray gun. Once my primer was dried nice and hard, I came back with a 320 grit super fine sandpaper and just sanded back any texture that was left behind by the roller. On this piece, I'm gonna be using a new to me chalk paint by House and Canvas in the color Sandstone. This is a Canadian made chalk paint that is available in Canada and the US. I was really impressed with it. It's beautiful, thick and luxurious. It's self-leveling and I really love the results that I got with this stuff. 
I applied two coats of paint with my Gravity Fed HVLP pneumatic spray gun. If you're interested in knowing more about my spraying setup, I will leave a card to a video all about it up above. And just in case spraying isn't your thing, this paint brushes beautifully as well. I let my paint dry really well overnight and then I came back the next morning and sealed everything up with two coats of Verithane Diamond Wood Finish in a satin sheen. While my sealer was drying, I brought all of the hardware inside and gave it a really good scrub down with some more of that TSP alternative and some steel wool. I then took everything back out to the garage and sprayed it with a few light coats of this Rust-Oleum Universal Metallic in Champagne Gold. I'm definitely not in love with the orangey brown 80s lacquered finish that was on this cane. So what I decided to do was actually flip it over and use the reverse unsealed side as what would show through the doors. I still wanted to lighten it up a little bit though. So I mixed up some of my paint color and a whole lot of water and did a really light wash of color over the cane. The last time I worked with a piece of cane in my furniture, you guys came at me in the comments telling me that I absolutely had to soak it before I applied it. So I did. I used my staple gun and some quarter inch staples to reapply the cane to the inside of the doors. And then all I needed to do was put everything back together. It's officially gone from dark and dated to light, bright, and modern. shabby if I don't say so myself. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today. Please make sure that you tap that subscribe button, leave me a thumbs up and a comment before you go, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.